okay the previous class we have discussed about that uh, dual ram type and ram type we have already discussed about that integration type and digital voltmeter and now in the today classes we are going to discuss the fourth type of digital voltmeter that is called successive approximation type here now is it audible all of you yes sir okay so all of you have know this method how it is going to do that one so approximation methods how we will do that one successive approximation type means suppose uh, what i will do i will give one pen here now this pen any pen or any material i will give you have i will ask you to check the weight of that one i will ask you people to check the weight of that one how you are going to check you are going to put into the weighing machine suppose if it is uh, digital then directly it is going to give the value शायद ओल्ड जनरेशन देखा है कि आपका ऐसा ये हाथ में पकड़ के चेक करते हैं ना वेजिटेबल मार्केट एंड ऑल द थिंग्स द वे यस लाइक दैट व्हाट दे विल डू इफ इट इज एक्सेस इज देयर देन दे आर गोइंग टू रिमूव समथिंग यस इफ इट इज कम इज देयर दे आर गोइंग टू ऐड लाइक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डू सक्सेसिव अप्रोक्सिमेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डू वी आर गोइंग टू गिव सम इनपुट इफ इट इज not equal to if input is greater than the reference value then we are going to remove some input if it is less then we are going to add like that we are going to do a successive approximation type digital voltmeter that principle it has here now so the successive approximations principle can be easily understood using a simple example the determination of the weight of an object here now you can consider any object you can Check based on their objective object weight here now. By using a balance, balance weighing weight balance we are going to use and placing the object on one side and approximate weight on the other side. The reference weight, whatever the standard weight, one side and the another object that is unknown object, unknown weight object that is one side we are going to place here now. So the weight of the object is determined. We can determine the Weight of the objective by approximately by removing something, adding something, we can take the do that one. For that reason, the name came that is successive approximate approximation type here now. If the weight is placed, the weight placed is more than the unknown weight here now. Whatever the approximate weight we have placed over there, it is more than the unknown weight. Then the weight is removed and another weight of smaller value. Suppose ten kg I have added. Ten kg is greater then i will add suppose 5 plus 3 kg 2 kg like that i am going to add smaller value weight is placed and again the measurement is performed here now so now it is found that the weight placed is less than that of the object so i be down ho gaye then another weight of smaller value is added suppose 250 g is added 500 g is added like that so the weight is or we are going to do the balance we are going to do that one here so this is the actually the diagram of sub successive approximation type dvm that is called digital voltmeter we are going to call this one see here this is the actually the it has two that one is uh, analog to digital to analog conversion it is going to do okay another one is control circuit is there other things are same like here the comparator we are using here the gate we are using and here starts stop pulse that is by giving some delay we can give and this is the ring counter how we are going to count that one that is counter will be start counter stop counter will be after so all that so the input we are giving here now so input we are going to give input attenuator whatever the big value is there it will to bring into smaller value it is going to use and sample and hold it is going to whatever the sample we are going to provide here it is going to hold and it will give the input here now the input is given given to the comparator here now this input is compared with the reference value here now for that reason reference supply voltage we have taken and that is digital to analog conversion we have taken here now the analog signal that is called v output is given to the comparator here now. both will compare here now v input and output will be compared here now 
so the gate is wait for the start and stop signal here now when it should have to start when it should have to stop it will wait for that one so for that reason what will happen when the start pulse signal is activate here now when i will this signal will activate here now what it will do the controller control register it will reset the value and the digital output is there it will show past 0 0 0 it is going to display here so when the start pulse signal activates the control in circuit the successive approximation register that is called this one successive approximation register that is called SAR we are going to consider this will be clear whatever the previous value will be there that will clear here and digital output will be 0 0 0 0 in the boolean form that is binary numbers are there here now 0 0 0 0 here now so the output of SAR this output is 0 0 0 we are going to show here v out of the digital to analog converter is 0 the output of this one is zero it is showing here now now if v input is greater than the output the comparator output is positive here now whatever the input is greater than the reference value or output on that condition the output of this comparator will be positive is there okay positive if the v output is greater than v input the input output is greater than input then the output of this comparator will be negative we are going to call that one based on this one only here see here d0 d1 d2 d3 d4 whatever this one eight bits we are going to use here now for that reason only 0 0 0 here i think you have studied uh, the first year uh, digital electronic subject you have studied yes binary numbers hexadecimal numbers yes sir. same thing we are using here now 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 total eight bits we are using here now based on that for the positive if input is greater than the output then it is going to set the value here now set and shift from one value to another value if the output is greater than input then it is going to reset the value that reset value will be reset from zero to one it is going to then if one is there that is one to zero it is going to reset that one here now like that this operation will be performed here now during the first clock pulse here now, during the first clock pulse, we will apply to here, the control circuit sets, this control circuit, it will set the D7 here. So eighth bit, it is D7, it is going to set into one, it is going to set and V out jumps to the half reference voltage here now. It is going to jump to the half of that reference value, it is going to jump here now. Then the SAR output is one here now, this one is one, other things already zero is there so zero 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 it is going to consider here now. the output will be zero 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 here now. then v out is greater than v in the comparator output is negative here now if the output is greater than input then this output will be output of comparator will be negative and that condition what will happen this d7 bit is there it is going to resets over there here now so comparator output is negative and the control circuit it resets d7 d7 it is going to research that one however if v input is greater than v output the comparator output is positive and control circuit keeps d7 into set here now if the input is greater than output it is going to set if output is greater than input then it is going to reset value here now so similarly like that it is going to give here now see i will open the directly table i will open and i will show you first for the input here now see here d7 sorry v input is less than v out initially at the start pulse is given this is set over there d7 is set is there so what will happen after this one if v input is less than v out what will happen the d7 is going to reset here now reset is nothing but what will happen this point bit is there it is going to shift into right here shift into right here now this bit will become shift into right here now this is a reset here now this will zero and this one will shift here now. next see here for d7 reset means zero is become one here oh, sorry one will become zero okay this one will shift it into here then again all the bits are zero here now. all the bits are zero over there next what will happen if again this one v input is less than v output so again it is going to reset here now this bit will become zero and this one will shift into right here now again it will become one here now. 
See other things are bits are zero one. See for this one for the D five set, what will happen? The V input will be greater than V output. Can now. So input is greater than output. On that condition, what will happen? D five will set over there. D five will set means what will happen? It is going to set that D five as fixed number one only here. It is going to set that one. D five will be set here now. D five will set so. Next row, what will happen? The D five will be set. So one same one, it is going to consider here now. Next, the D four will be again. It is shift into one here now. Next, it is one 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 zero zero zero. It is going to again. Again here, input D is greater than output. Again, D four value it is going to set. So same set is nothing but same. It is going to repeat for the next cycle also here now. Next repetition here now. Here D five is already set. D four is set. Next. D three one we are going to consider here now, but V input is less than V output, and that condition D three is going to reset here now. Reset means next it is going to it will one will become zero here now. The one will become zero here now. Next the one is shifted here. This see here the what is that one now? In the straight line it is going to all ones we are going to use wherever set is there. Suppose D four is set means the next you consider that D four value will be one. Next again D two will be Reset here, so this one D two will be one to zero. The reset means one value will be zero, and zero value will be one. We are going to consider. Thus, D one is set means again D one value will be one. D zero is set means that is set here. Now, like this, yeah, we are going to operate in the eight numbers. It is going to operate that one somewhere. I have explained that eight value where it is the counter. Then advances one shifting a one in the second MSB, that is uh, of the control register, and its reading becomes one one zero zero zero. So somewhere I have explained that. Not there. Here only. If in this case the total reference voltage exceeds the auto output voltage, unknown voltage, the reference voltage is exceeds the unknown voltage, that is input voltage. The comparator produces an output that is causes the most significant bit to become zero here. So reset is nothing but one will become zero. That is called most significant bit is MSB, LSB, least significant value, most significant value. I've heard the name. Yes or no? So like that. So you just uh, this much is not necessary. This numbers and all the thing. Just for your understanding, I have taken. See how the operation. What it is going to input is given to the attenuator. The higher signal is attenuates into lower signal. Then it is going to hold that one. The here the input will give out unknown value. And from the reference value, digital to analog conversion, the output will become. It is going to compare based on the start and stop bus. The gate will operate that one. It is going to give the digital output here. So here. Eight bits we are going to operate. So each bit wise we are going to add, set, reset, set, reset by approximation, adding, removing, adding, removing. Based on that we are going to get the digital output. We are going to get both input should be equal to output. We are going to get that one. That is called approximation, successive approximation type digital voltmeter. We are going to call that one. So the next method that is called continuous balance method. We are going to call this one. Continuous. We have to balance that value. How it is possible? All of you have studied the potentiometer. Potentiometer you have studied. Here the some precision potentiometer value we are going to consider. We are going to take for the reference here. Okay, here. See here. The main heart of this instrument is that is called chopper circuit and servo motor. Here. This is mechanical chopper we are going to use. And here. The servo motor we are going to use. The servo motor will be operate based on that for the difference value. We are it is going to operate from the potentiometer, precision potentiometer. We are whatever the difference is there by adjusting this value, we will make that one into zero. The very simple answer is the simple operation. Circuit de kato kaise hai, baba aisa lagte, but that is very simple here now. See here, the input we are going to give here, DC input that it is going to attenuate. And that is overload protection and AC rejection, AC whatever the reverse it will be considered. That is rejection circuit we have added here now. That will given to the chopper circuit here. Now mechanical chopper circuit you have given input signal here now. And another we have taken from the 
reference value we have taken here. Now, this mechanical chopper circuit, it is going to operate for the AC drive, single phase, sorry, AC circuit with frequency it is going to operate here now. But this chopper circuit, what it will do, it is going to give the rectangular signals it is going to give, square waveforms it is going to give over there. Here. The output of this chopper will be square waveform it is going to give here now, like this square waveform here now. It is not a pure DC or whatever AC here now, square waveform it is going to give. That square waveform we are going to fed into the amplifiers, pre-amplifiers, then power amplifiers. This output of it is going to amplify the signal, square signals, and then it is going to give to the power amplifier. Though what it will do, the power amplifier will give, up, give the power supply to the motor, servo motor, which is difference voltage is there, input and output difference value is there. The, based on that, it is going to operate the servo motor here now. So whatever the difference value is there, we can make by adjusting this one, whatever the difference value, we are to bring that one into zero. V input and V reference should be equal to zero or V1 minus V in minus V out should be zero to make that one. We are going to adjust this one that will the servo motor will give that one so that whatever the input value is there that is unknown value it is going to display here this is the simple operation here now i'll read here based on that i will explain once again here. continuous balance digital voltmeter the basic diagram of servo balancing potentiometer type digital voltmeter this is continuous balance type also and it is also called as servo balancing potentiometer type also it is going to call servo motor we are also going to use and potentiometer we are going to use based on that the name came here now so the input signal or input voltage is applied to the one side of mechanical chopper this is a mechanical chopper one side is input signal is applied here now and the other side of the chopper being connected being connected to the variable arm of a precision potentiometer it is connected here now. variable arm it is connected here now. so the output of the chopper comparator here now this is the chopper comparator we are going to consider here that is this one pre-amplifier is there chopper comparator so that is which is driven by the line voltage at the frequency rate here now. this is if we, this one it is driven by the line voltage with the line frequency it is going to operate over there line frequency is a square 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 wave signal whose amplitude is a function of difference in voltages connected to the opposite side of the chopper here. this is the square wave signal is there its amplitude its value is the function of is a function of difference in voltages here now this voltage and this voltage is there that difference it is going to give in the square wave it is going to give here now it is like this it is going to give here now it is not a sinusoidal wave square wave it is going to give the signal over there to the opposite side of the chopper here now next what will happen see here next the square wave signal is amplified here now this is going to amplify it and fed to a power amplifier it is going to fed to the power amplifier and this power amplifier square signal is difference signal drives the arm of potentiometer it is going to drive this arm of potentiometer to the direction needed to make the difference voltage is zero whatever the difference voltage is there suppose i will consider c r v input compare we are going to compare that one v input minus v output we are going to do here now v our input minus v output we are going to do here now if both are equal then the value output is zero only na if both are equal the output is zero if suppose v input is uh, suppose 3 v output is 1 2 then the output will become 1 so on that condition in which direction it should have to make by variation doing this one this one will should have to come to the zero value up to that the potentiometer what it will do it is going to adjust here now so that is only they are telling here now the amplified square waveform difference signal drives the arm of the potentiometer it is going to drive or uh, rotate the operate different signal of the arm of potentiometer in the direction needed to make the difference voltage zero here now in any direction it may be up direction it may be low direction to make this difference voltage into zero here now 
So the servo meter also drives a mechanical readout here. Now this value it is going to rotate here now. So that is the mechanical value it is going to read out, which is an indication of the magnitude of the input voltage here. It is whatever the value it is going to display, that is the magnitude of this input voltage it is going to display here now. So this DVM uses the principle of balancing instead of sampling. It is going to balance for that reason. It is not going to take sample here now. It is not going to take sample here now. Directly it is going to balance by varying this potentiometer value here now. So for that reason, balancing type digital voltmeter the name came here now. So it completes the digital voltmeter types. All five types of digital voltmeters it has completed now. So the next topic that is called digital voltmeter here. Only block diagrams, explanation, block diagram, explanation is that here. There is no much thing over there. Already PPTs are uploaded, notes are already available. You can read that one. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Any doubts here? Any doubts? कोई है क्या सो रहे सब लोग तेरी पार्ट है बोल के नेवरी कैन यू रिप्लाई नो डाउट सर ओके सो द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज कॉल्ड डिजिटल मल्टीमीटर यू हैव यूज्ड दिस डिजिटल मल्टीमीटर इन द लैबोरेटरीज व्हेन द ऑफलाइन प्रैक्टिकल्स यू आर गोइंग टू डू यू कैन यूज दिस वन इट इज ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल इन आवर लाइव लैबोरेटरीज मशीन ईएम मेजरमेंट all the labs the digital multimeters are there here <clears throat> see here the name itself it is saying that a multimeter multimeter means what we can measure multi parameters multi electrical parameters by using a one meter so it may be the voltage current and resistance we can measure here you can i am saying that voltage current and resistance it may be the voltage may be ac or dc here like that we are going to use here now okay see here the low resistance box is the here and high resistance box is there here the input is giving here the input is giving to this comparator here now so if this comparator it is going to take the signal and if it is suppose any signal we have given resistance measurement is there means it is going to get this is switched on this which will be switched on we are going to get the ohms converter whatever the input signal is there analog signal into resistance it is going to convert and it is going to give the input here now so this analog signal will convert into digital and it is going to display here so we are going to take the precision reference value we are going to take here now it is going to compare and it is going to display here so interface we are going to use whatever this value is there a ohm value that one we can convert into binary coded decimal value we can convert and we can give the output also here. for the resistance if it is voltage dc voltage then directly dc attenuator is there it is in the attenuator the signal and it is given to the analog to digital signal so or if it ad ac is there it is ac it is going to give here like this all the paths we have provided here now these are the simple block diagram of digital multimeter here so analog meters require no power supply they give a better visual indication of ch changes and suffer less from electrical noise and oscillation here now so analog zeroth ko analog power meters meters there is no required for the power supply and all the things just it is going to due to the magnetic effect of that signal will pass the indicator we are going to use the pointer it is going to deflect the value over there. so these meters are simple comparing with analog meters the digital meters are simple and inexpensive the cost is also very less here now so digital meters on the other hand offers high accuracy whatever the pointer is there it is exactly 2 ko hai kya 3 ko hai samajh mein nahi aata but the, if it is digital we can exactly say that when it is a 2 or 3 it is going to display the value of that one so it has high accuracy and have a high input impedance and are smaller in size the digital instruments are very smaller in sizes here they use an unambiguous reading at greater viewing distances it is going to for the greater bahut dur se bhi dekh sakte hain humne so example you can uh, use the railway station and all the things they have made the digital display which train is coming at what time arrival departure and all the things that's a, those are all the digital displays only from the long uh, distance also you can observe that one 
so the output available is electrical to visual readout is there so three major classes of digital multimeters are there principles are panel meters we are going to fix the panels the bench type meters we are going to on the board or bench we are going to fix that one system meters we can use anywhere like wherever the requirement here now so based on the whatever the application is there so those are operation is same but types are different we are going to call that one here now. all digital multimeter principles employ some kind of analog to digital converters here now. so all digital multimeters you consider they are going to convert the signal from analog to digital only here so the panel meters are usually placed at one location we are going to fix into the one panel we can give the any input you can give voltage current resistance we can measure that all the things by changing the knob of that one here now so bench meters and system meters are often multimeters here now they can read ac and dc voltages currents and resistance over several ranges we can measure that one here now see here this is the diagram whatever i have explained here now so the basic circuit shown in this above figure here now always a dc voltmeter here now so current is converted to voltage by passing through it a precision low send resistance here now i can give the current is this one can convert into the low send value here now it which will convert into to the that is current converted into dc by employing rectifiers and filters here now this dots it indicates it may be employer rectifier and all the things we are providing here now we have not mentioned what is that dot and all the things here okay so for resistance measurement the meter includes a precision low current source that is applied across the unknown resistance now we can use the precision low current source we have to use then that is applied across the unknown resistance we are going to apply that one here now again this gives a dc voltage which is digitalized and read out as ohms here now it is going to digitalize here now analog signal is converted into digital and you can read out as in the ohms we can read out that one so bench meters already i told see here this is current to voltage converter you know how the current is we are going to put put to the summation box here now we are going to use the different resistors we are going to use here now so voltage drop between this resistance is nothing but product of this current and resistance only na yes or no v equal to ir we are going to consider so i is passing through some value of impedances or resistances here now so voltage drop across this one that will give the voltage only so the current is converted into voltage that analog signal is converted into uh, digital then uh, we are going to decade the counter and we can read out the signal here now so current to voltage converter they have told here now the current to be measured is applied to the summing resistance the summation value we are going to apply here now since the current at the input of the amplifier is close to zero because of very high input impedance here impedance is high here now so the current ir is very nearly equal to ii ii is the input value here no input current and current ir is nothing but current through the resistances here no causes a voltage drop which is proportional to the current this is voltage drop across the resistances is nothing but ir into r that will causes the proportional the voltage drop which is proportional to that current here no to be developed across the resistance here no the voltage drop will be produces across the resistances which is proportional to that current we are going to call here now this voltage drop is the input to the analog to digital converter thereby providing a reading that is proportional to the unknown current here now we can measure the current also here now so the resistance is measured by passing a known current we can pass the current from a constant current source through a unknown through an unknown resistance we can pass that one the resistance value we don't know that one but the current we can identify then voltage drop across we can identify based on that the formula you can calculate and we can compare that one but the resistance the output analog to digital signal it is going to fed that digital signal it is going to give the value in the ohms it is going to give here now same thing we have the voltage drop across the resistor is applied to the analog to digital converter thereby producing an indication of the value of the unknown resistance here now it is going to indicate or produce the value of unknown value unknown resistance it is going to indicate over there here now so this is nothing but this completes the multimeter here now this is ohm meter and current voltage ac dc we can measure over there i think you have seen how many of you seen the digital voltmeter sorry the multimeter 
Can you raise your hands? Hello. Have you, anyone seen the digital multimeter? For Rohan, sir, was here, only one person. Soon uh, the offline classes may be started. Start from that situation. You can see that one. We'll decide that one. Okay. So digital multimeter is over. Now we'll go for the next topic that is called Q meter here. Quality meter we are going to call quality meter. So while uh, discussing about the which uh, place we have two factor we have discussed na. Where we have discussed the Q factor, anyone can you tell me? The bridges while discussing the resistance measurement, capacitance measurement, we are going to get this Q factors also we are going to get. I will tell that one here now. So Q meter we are going to use to identify the quality of the coils we are going to identify that one. Capacitor banks we are going to use, inductors we are going to use in the industries commercial areas, we are going to use that one. So to identify the quality of that one, we are going to use the Q meter. So, so the overall efficiency of the coils and capacitors intended for radio frequency application is best evaluated using the Q value here. Now, Q value is nothing but quality value that is called quality factor also we, can, we are going to call. So for that reason to measure the quality factor or quality value, we are going to use the quality meter that is called Q meter we are going to use here. So the Q meter is used to measure some electrical properties of coils and capacitor. It is going to use some properties of coils and capacitor as it is going to use here now. So the Q meter working principle is based on series resonance. I've heard the name of resonance. The resonance will occur if you, are, if you have studied the series RLC circuit and that condition if XL equal to XC, the inductive reactance equal to capacitive reactance, that is called a resonance, we are going to call that one. That is called resonance. If resistance, inductance, capacitance, all are connected in series. So if XL equal to XC on that condition, that is called series resonance, we are going to call it. What do you mean by XL? Anyone can you tell me? XL means what? I'm asking to you people only. L means what? L means what? C means what? Anyone tell me? Inductance, Inductance and, cap and capacitance. capacitance. Inductance and capacitance. What do you mean by X? R means what? Resistance. Resistance. That means? Impedance. Impedance. Then what do you mean by this one? Z equal to R plus JX, we are going to call that one. What do you mean by that X? The name you have forgotten. That is called reactance, we are going to call that one. That is called reactance. Yeah. If it is XL, then that is called inductive reactance. And if it is XC, that is called capacitive reactance, we are going to call. X is nothing but XL minus XC or XC minus XC based on the greater that one that is called net reactance we are going to call that one here. So under the series resonance if XL equal to XC on that condition it is going to operate here now. So the voltage drop across the coil or capacitor is Q times the applied voltage here now. So what they are telling here now under series resonance the voltage drop across the coil, any coil or capacitor, you consider that one. That is equal to the Q times, number of suppose four times the applied voltage. That is called the Q is nothing but quality is four times. We can call that one. Where Q is the ratio of reactance to the resistance we are going to call that one. It is nothing but XL minus XL divided by R, XL divided by R or XC divided by R because XL equal to XC only, na? yes or no? Which one is known value? L is known, then we can use XL by R or we can consider this one instead of equal to this is R, we can consider here. Okay, so the ratio of XL divided by R that is called Q factor or Q value we are going to get here. 
If a fixed voltage is applied to the circuit, a voltmeter across the capacitor can be calibrated to read Q directly. And now we are going to apply the fixed value of the voltage, input voltage, then the voltmeter across the capacitor can be used as a read value for the calibration purpose. We can use that earlier. So there is no much thing here, but we have to derive the formula for the this one here now. So it is going to work on the series resonance. I have told here now series resonance resonant is nothing but when the inductive reactance is equal to the capacitive reactance. So the resonance is the condition exists in the circuit when their inductance and capacitance reactance are equal of magnitude. The value of XL equal to XC, then only the resonance will be observed. The induced energy, which is oscillating between the electric and magnetic fields, they are going to induce energy. They are oscillating between electric and magnetic field of the capacitor and inductor respectively here now. So the Q meter is based on the characteristics of the resistance, inductance and capacitance. It is going to, based on these characteristics, it is going to operate. It is going to operate over there. So the figure below shows a coil of resistance, inductance and capacitance connected in series with the circuit here. Now this is normal RLC circuit is there. Here AC supply is given. Here R, L, C is given here now. So what we have to consider here, this coil is there, that is it has inductance L, this capacitor it has inductance, sorry, capacitor C here now. If XL equal to XC, XL equal to XC, then these two will, net reactance will become X equal to zero on that condition. Net reactance will zero, na? XL minus XC or XL minus XC, that is called Zero. See, these two are zero means what will happen? The circuit will access only resistive circuit only. Yes, sir. No. The circuit is act as only resistive circuit on that condition. That is called the resonance we are going to consider here. R L C series connected here now. So voltage drop across R and L equal to voltage drop across this capacitor. We are going to call. We have one formula that one. I will show that one here. At resonance frequency, I told just now under a resonance frequency here now at resonance if xl equal to xc and x l equal to xc then that one we can write as el equal to ixl that is voltage drop across the inductance that is called el equal to ixl ec equal to ixc and e equal to ir okay e equal to ir we are going to call that one that e is nothing but total applied voltage EC is voltage across capacitor, EL is voltage across inductor, XL is the inductive reactance, XC is the capacitive reactance, R is the coil resistance, I is the current flowing through the circuit. In a series circuit, the current flowing through will be same only. We know the formula already that is called Q equal to XL by R. You can consider Q equal to XL by R, we know the formula, R XC by R, we can write the formula, R this one here now, EL, divided by EC also or EC divided by E also. That one also we can write the formula. EC divided by E or EL by E also we can use the formula. I will use directly what I will do instead of using this all the formula under the resonance condition. What is the frequency we have to note down that one? The frequency resonance frequency we have to identify. This is the formula for Q meter that is over the point. The Q value is over here now. So we, I told that when XL equal to XC, I told that one. What is the value of XL? How we can write XL? Omega L. Omega? L. Omega L. XC equal to? One upon. One upon, correct, very good. Omega C that is called, one upon Omega C. Omega equal to angular velocity that is called two phi F we are going to consider here, two phi F. F naught we are going to consider for the under that is the resonance condition here equal to L into L divided by one divided by that is two phi F naught C we are going to consider here now. So this F naught I will send into LH side it will F naught into F naught that is called F naught square it will become here two phi is there when I will send into RH side it will become two phi into two phi that is called four pi square it will become the value will be four pi square. L into C here now. So F equal to one by total that is F equal to square root of this one here now. Square root of four, how much it is? Two only, na? Yes. Sir. Square root of four, that is called two. 
5 square, square root of 5 square, that is called 5. So 1 by root LC, that is resonance frequency formula we are going to consider. For the calculation, we can use this formula. And for the value of Q meter, we can use this formula we can use here. now. So it completes the Q meter. In the next class, what we will do, we will discuss about the, what is that one, uh, electronic counter, uh, energy meter, and LED, LCD. Only four topics are there. In one hour, it is going to complete that one. Tomorrow, we'll finish the fifth unit, we'll finish that one. And uh, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, up to Saturday, we'll finish the syllabus. I will plan according to that. Okay. Any doubts here? No, sir. So we'll stop here only. So one more thing, tomorrow one activity is there, SOBUS activity. All of you have heard that one. So you can come to the college. We actually it is 22, 22, 24, 25. Up to 25th it is there, 24th also. So if anybody is coming means you can, they will get the hostel facility also. For only four, three, three days. Huh? After that, you can leave that place. Later, kaya hote malam nahi. If anybody interested, you can directly come to the college tomorrow. If you are interested, some people they have registered already. It is there for the entrepreneurship development cell. Actually, uh, that is a very nice session to be conducted in the international seminar or conference hall. It is there for offline session. It is not there for online. It is offline is there. If interested, you can uh, while before coming to the college, you call me and come. Okay. Next. Just a minute, I will take the attendance and you can leave that one. One, two, three. Three, rule number three. Are you there? Yes. Rule number 11, 12, 11 is there, no? 12, 13, number 12, 13, 14 is there, 15, 16, 17, 18, 17, present, 18, 19, 20, so number 20 are you there? Twenty-six, twenty-seven, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three. Okay. So we'll stop here and we'll continue in the next class.